I'm uh, Franz Berkhout, I'm the coordinator of the Responses project. Uh, the Responses project really has two faces, two sides. On the one hand, we're doing work on how uh, the world can reduce radically uh, greenhouse gas emissions, and we're doing that through large-scale modelling, uh, and we're looking at what contribution the EU is going to play in radically reducing emissions. Uh, and that's work that is already generating very important results in relation to a new uh, global emission scenario known as the Representative Concentration Pathway 2.6. And we're trying to fill in what are the details of trying to achieve that, which would be a two, so-called two-degree scenario for global warming by the end of this century, by 2100. We're trying to fill in practically how could we achieve that. And on the second side, on uh, managing our resilience to climate change, we're looking at a number of different sectors, including water and health and uh, uh, nature protection, and looking at how those policies at the European level need to be adjusted to really take account of the emerging impacts over time of, uh, of climate change, drought, increased flood risk, uh, heat, uh, uh, stress, these kinds of things, and how they affect uh, people uh, and nature, and, and how European policy can be adjusted. Hi, my name is Susanne Hanger, and I'm involved in work package six of the Responses Project uh, on regional development and infrastru infrastructure. In the work package, we are focusing on cohesion policy, one of the EU's most important and influential uh, policy areas in monetary terms. Cohesion policy is mostly evolving around uh, investments on infrastructure projects in different sectors and across different jurisdictional levels. Because of this multiple levels, uh, it's a very important policy area for mainstreaming climate concerns. But it's also relatively tar uh, difficult to target for researchers because of these complex dimensions. In order to uh, really get most of these dimensions into the project, we are having a twofold approach. On the one hand, uh, we do work quantitatively and we conducted a pan-European impact and vulnerability assessment. In this assessment, we uh, addressed a set of different hazards and were able to identify hotspots, uh, which will be particularly important for focused mainstreaming efforts and also focused EU funding. On the other hand, we did work qualitatively. And while we found out that mitigation features very prominently across all parts of cohesion policy, adaptation is not, or at least not sufficiently integrated. At the moment, we are trying to identify options to better mainstream climate concerns or adaptation concerns, particularly into this important policy area. For this, Stakeholder involvement is very important and an integral part of the responses work in general as well. This work in our work package is at the moment crucial because uh, the EU is currently negotiating the terms and conditions for the upcoming structural funds period starting in 2014. By contributing to this process, we are able to help making a cohesion policy more robust in the face of upcoming climate change impacts. Hi, I'm Paul Hunter. I'm from the University of East Anglia in the UK and I'm leading the uh, work package on health. In the health work package, we've been primarily focusing on what sort of things are actually beneficial in reducing the adverse health impacts that may be associated with climate change. We've focused really on uh, three main areas. One is uh, waterborne disease, another is vector-borne disease, and especially dengue fever, and also uh, on heat stress mortality in the elderly. One of the uh, emerging findings so far has been the, the potential value of uh, public health interventions that lead to behavioural change in people. For example, uh, programmes that encourage people to look after elderly neighbours during uh, heat, uh, extreme heat events, programmes that would uh, encourage people to control the sites for breeding of mosquitoes uh, to reduce the risk of uh, vector-borne disease. And I think there is 
a need to understand when those sorts of interventions would be most appropriate because clearly if you if you introduce these things too early people will get bored and uh, by the time it's needed and, uh, and that I think is one of the big issues for, uh, for future research. We've been doing uh, a variety of systematic reviews of the literature and I think one of the main findings so far has been that there's actually quite a lot of evidence about the um, uh, effectiveness of a number of different interventions that may well be prove useful under a, a warmer world. Um, however, a lot of the evidence that's available is not well put together. It may, it, it may be primarily applicable to uh, countries elsewhere in the world. And I think the big challenge is to make sure that that evidence base is strengthened and strengthened particularly in relationship to uh, the needs of the European population. I'm André Schoff from PBL Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency and together with Detlef van Vuren and Sebastian Deeman I'm responsible for the scenario work in, our, in the responses project. In the scenario work package we uh, looked at two scenarios, one scenario without climate policy and one scenario <coughs> that aims at limiting global temperature change to two degrees Celsius, that's the deep emission reduction scenario. In a scenario without climate policy uh, emissions are expected to increase to a level that is 2.5 times higher at the end of the century than they are in 2005. Um, this would lead to a global temperature change of about 4 degrees above pre-industrial levels. Uh, so this is much higher than the aim of 2 degrees. In order to, uh, to limit temperature change to 2 degrees, emissions should be re reduced to about zero at the end of the century. In order to achieve this, we really need a big change in the power supply sector. Uh, without climate policies, the power supply sector is expected uh, to be dominated by fossil fuels. Uh, in a mitigation scenario, in a scenario with, uh, with deep emission reductions, this has to be replaced by renewable energy, by nuclear energy, also with bioenergy and also with, uh, by applying carbon capture and storage. And by applying carbon capture and storage together with bioenergy, we can actually achieve deep uh, negative emission reductions, which could help achieve the two degree targets. So what's really new in our uh, work package is that we don't only look at the ideal world in which the carbon tax is implemented and the cheapest policy options are taken. We also look at specific policy options and what could specific policy options that may not be ideal, but could be more realistic, what they could achieve. So then we get a more concrete picture about the policy options that, we, that are, can be implemented and how these can help to achieve a two-degree target.